hey y'all so because the real housewife of beverly hills is off and the real housewives of salt lake city doesn't start until november i guess i will be reviewing the real housewives of potomac because a few people asked me to so i'm gonna be recording in between the breaks so that's pretty much how my review will be cut up so they kind of start off with showing us that everything that's gonna happen with the fight between monique and candace that we have already seen all over the blogs um the whole situation with Ashley and Michael and then we we go back a week so we one week earlier before I guess maybe the fight with Monique and um Candace so we got Candace she's in the studio and she's re-singing um the song that she did to Chris at their wedding um it's go-go music inspired because you know Potomac DC go-go music real heavy in that area um I actually like the song that the crazy enough I actually like the way that this sound this song sound I liked it a lot but she pretty much said she's telling you know Chris pretty much at the end of the day she's done with Monique she don't have any time and I did do a itty bitty quick little like two second like review on the Real Housewife of Potomac um a few videos ago but I stand by what I said in that which is Monique was picking on Candace all last week like that conversation was none of your business they was not being rude because they told you at the dinner that all three of them was going to go off and talk by themselves. You are just mad at her for the whole thing with Sharice. And I'm sorry, like I said, if Candace is right in saying that all of that happened two years ago, then I would probably be the same way. I'm cool with her. I don't understand why you can't be cordial and sit in the same room as her. And to be quite honest, Monique, like everybody's been saying, you're making yourself look guilty when it comes to this whole trainer thing. You're making yourself look real guilty because you're too pressed about it. You're way too pressed about the whole situation. So, yeah, so that's that. So then we get on to the whole thing with Ashley and Michael. They go out to eat. Okay, so as y'all know, there was, well, last week we got the text. I mean, the Candace got the text and a picture of Michael at a bar talking about how he wanted to go. He had a boyfriend and he had a wife and how he was all up on some woman. And then maybe like a couple hours later or the next day, um, the, the pictures hit the blogs about, you know, him being in a, um, what is it called? Him being in the hotel room um, in his underwear and whatnot. So Ashley said that she pretty much wanted to go out to eat and talk to him because she didn't want to scream in front of the baby. So she said she was sitting there pumping, which that's the worst. Like, for you to be sitting there pumping and get this information, trifling. But sitting up there, she was pumping. She got a text from Monique first, and then she got a text from um, Robin. And it was the link to the article, you know, of him all in his underwear and stuff. So she said she called Michael. She was like, get your ass home right now. He gets home and she he pretty much tells her, you know, well, I did meet this girl at the bar. We got drunk. You know, we was in the car making out. And then, you know, we went upstairs. I was drunk. I passed out and I woke up with her next to me. Michael, you're full of shit. You fucked that woman. I don't, it bothers me so much as to why when you get caught in something like this, why don't you just tell the whole truth? Because we know what it is. Just be honest. Like, if you said that you kissed a girl and you willingly went up to the room, why don't you just be honest and say that you fucked her? How is that going to make it any fucking worse than whatever than what it already is when that's what we think? Ooh, Monique is so beautiful. I'm sorry. I'm sitting here watching her. She's so damn beautiful. Annoying, but she's beautiful. Um. So, yeah. So, um, that's super confusing to me. But, um. So, Ashley pretty much, like... I don't want to say she really goes off. Um, I'm, sorry, I'm trying to read my notes here. Yeah, okay, so she pretty much goes, well, you know, I'm glad that we did it here because I wouldn't be able to keep my composure. You wasn't thinking about me. You wasn't thinking about Dean. Then she slips in there. Well, you know, pretty, this is what I get from what Ashley was trying to say on camera, on camera, mind you. What she was trying to say is, well, look, you know good and well, I can't really go too much in on you because you know that our relationship hasn't been traditional you know that i've had a girlfriend at a point in time and me and her was doing our own thing at one point in time and you know he pretty much said yeah and i'd always like do what you pretty much they have they have other people they mess with other people outside of their relationship but according to them according to them on camera um whenever they do mess with another female you know Normally, she's there. Like, normally, it's a, it's a group thing. It's never, oh, you go out and find the bitch by yourself and do it. Which, there are people who have those arrangements, but I don't believe that that's their arrangement. I think their arrangement is that they both go off and do what they want to do. 
about who they want to fuck. And as long as at the end of the day, it don't come to light and it stay hidden underneath the ground and it's not put out in the public, then she doesn't care. That's the honest truth of the matter. That's what's actually going on. And what she's pretty much pissed about is the fact that this type of stuff is now out there. After they have that little whole conversation, you know, because I guess uh, Michael was all upset that he was put in the spot. And now he's like, oh, well, I want to talk to the producer. The producer come over. And they're both like, well, we've been honest enough. There's nothing else that we need to talk about. You just mad because you got caught up. You mad because you finally got caught in your shit at the end of the day. You and Ashley, we have all known from the beginning We've all known from the beginning that you two mother effers had an arrangement. And the problem here, Ashley, do you want to know what the problem is? The problem is, Ashley, is that this whole time you've been on the show, you've been swearing up and down that that's not how you get down. And your husband would never. And talking about everybody else's husband and what the fuck they ain't doing for them. If that's what you want to do, fine. Fine. But don't sit up here on TV and try to make it seem like that's not what it is. It is what it is. You are in an open marriage you are there for the bag you have secured the bag two times over so why 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 you can't just sit in that i don't understand but anyway it's back on i'll be back okay so then we have um i don't know monique wants to go talk to somebody in her company i ain't paying attention to that part because i was talking to y'all but anyway remember when i said she's so beautiful that's when that part was going on didn't feel like rewinding it anyway so uh let's skip over to giselle and robin giselle and robin they go out shopping Robin pretty much sits Giselle down and tells her pretty much what happened after she left. And Giselle, like the rest of us, you know, don't understand why the hell she was mad for. Doesn't really make any sense. Now, the funny part is, remember, Ashley said that she got the the links from Monique and she got the link from Robin. Robin said she meant to send it to Sharice and she didn't mean to send it to... Ashley but she did so she just kind of played along with the which I find okay I was gonna say well it seemed like everybody no it seemed like everybody is friends with Sharice Monique it seems like everybody but you is friends with her or are you just mad because you felt like you and Monique was cl- I mean you and Candace was closer but it seems like Sharice is friends with everybody as far as I'm concerned j- j- just 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 my I hear her name a couple times that's all I'm saying then we move on and we go to Wendy and Eddie. Um, they're taking their son Cruz, who is four, to karate. Personally, I wouldn't take my child at the age of four because they're too young to even comprehend anything. And I'm not paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars for you to just sit up here and play around. Unless that's something you really, really wanted to do. I'm not about to sit up here and pay all of this money. But whatever. I don't have their type of money. So do what it is that you want to do with it. Um, she talks about, Wendy talks about how her maternity leave is over. And how now, you know, she, I think it's a, she like works at John Hopkins. She does like, you know, commentator. Like, she's a commentator on like different like news outlets and stuff. What the fuck was that? I almost never hear a horn outside. That's weird. Anyway, so she pretty much is... You know, trying to figure out what it is that she wants to do. She talked about how, you know, with her parents being Nigerian and stuff, how she's always followed, like, their career path. Like, the path, the career path that they wanted, which was either a doctor or a lawyer. So, she is at the point where she doesn't want to chase her parents' dream anymore. She wants to chase her own, but she's nervous about telling her mama. Because y'all know how these, y'all know how Nigerian's mama be. They not with shits. They not with it. I can relate to her saying that she was... She was always, like, following her parents' dream because I feel like for a really, really long time, I was doing the same thing. It took Even now, I'm still kind of trying to figure out where it is I want to go. You know, I'm in my mid-20s, so I'm still trying to figure out exactly which way I want to lean towards. But there was a specific time when I was in school when I really stopped and I thought, my goodness, child, you do you even want to do this? And, and for a long time, it really did hit me, like, damn a lot of the shit that i was that i was doing was simply just so i could just so so my mama could be like oh yeah look at my child she goes to xyz school or she's gonna be majoring in xyz and you gotta do what's best for you boo so then we go on to monique and monique and chris is taking a walk in a park or whatever and she's talking about her podcast this is what i want to say i've been wanting to say this for a while now i want everybody to stop doing podcasts I'm serious because I understand that it's something like it's easy in the sense of um, like it doesn't take much to do. All you really need is a microphone in your mouth. 
but I don't think people really truly understand the and I'm gonna say the art and the work and like that actually goes into a podcast and how specifically right now how flooded everything is um I just think a lot of y'all y'all don't know what the fuck y'all doing y'all doing it because like I said it's not first of all podcasting is not easy but it's the easiest thing to access I guess for somebody to do like I said all you really need is a microphone and internet so you can do it kind of like music you know that's why everything is so fucking hard right now but a lot of y'all are not meant to do podcasts you have to have a certain personality type you have to have a certain type of engagement it's not for everybody and sorry money you don't give me podcast type vibes I listen to a lot and I'm talking about I've been listening to podcasts since they since they first started I've been listening to loudspeaker networks which was probably one of the first premier specifically black fucking uh networks for podcasts the combat jack show the read um um it's brilliant in the, i think brilliant idiots is on there like um horrible editions um shit like that like there's a certain way that this podcast game works but anyway she says how out of 300 tickets that she's had that she has like to fill up her little thingy she's only sold 20 and like Chris said, I think you might need to scale back just a little bit. Oh, well, no, I don't really know. No, you need to scale the fuck back. This is the thing. I think a lot of these reality TV stars have to under, have to start understanding what's going to translate outside of them just being on TV and just on Instagram. Just because you get a whole bunch of likes, just because you have a whole bunch of followers, that does not mean that that is going to trans translate into your business news. You know, it, it doesn't mean that... Like, me who watches The Real Housewives of Potomac, that doesn't mean necessarily that I'm going to follow Monique from there to her Instagram or her social media. And then, not just that, but I could follow her on those and still not necessarily follow her to something like a podcast, you know? And I think people have to realize that just because you have a whole bunch of followers and people know who you are, that doesn't automatically mean that you're going to get that business automatically. Take it from somebody who know i'm not popular but i'm just saying take it from somebody who i know business wise it doesn't work like that but she and she also said she spent two hundred thousand dollars so far which is like for startup cost girl what startup cost do you need for real i know people who made a whole girl y'all spend the money that you don't need to you spend the money that you don't need to you spend the money that you don't need to or you're not spending it correctly how about that um, but she pretty much says that she's mad at Candace because Candace texted her and said that she wasn't going to do the podcast. So now Candace has to make up all of these different things and all of this is done there. I'm sorry. I get to a degree what Monique is saying, like that is a little bit unprofessional to drop out at the last minute. But at the same time, I get what Candace was saying. But you couldn't even be bothered to say bye to me like a couple days ago. So why would I then come to your event and try to like support you? Like that doesn't make any sense. You don't fuck with me and we don't like each other. So there's no point of me trying to pull up to this fucking event that I don't have to do. That has nothing to do with the show. It's for you. And this, I would be doing this for you as a friend, but we're not friends. So no, I don't care that you got to do a whole bunch of flowers. It's not my problem. But anyway, Ashley is at the store talking to her mama. I'll be right back. All right, y'all. So we have Ashley's um, Ashley Mama. They go out, and Ashley Mama pretty much just says that she's very disappointed and that she needs to put Ashley needs to put her foot down and tell Michael that she ain't with this shit because it's not gonna keep happening. And Ashley pretty much says, you know, that she's fine and she's not afraid to leave Michael. Yes, you are. You are afraid to leave Michael because you're afraid of you. You don't. I don't know if she signed. I don't remember if she signed the prenup. But your whole lifestyle as a whole would change. And especially with you having a baby, your whole thing would change. So I do think you're afraid. So we get to the whole wine tasting or whatever with Giselle. I'm literally on the last break, I guess, before they're going to show the fight. So um, they come in. Everybody's cool. Now, this is what I don't understand. Monique, you talked about last episode how people need to not come for people marriages and leave people marriages out of it but as soon as you came in and your confessional you're talking about so Giselle was excited about getting a literary award about writing a book about her ex-husband that cheated on her that she's back with that like with that same husband that she's back with like what's gonna be the sequel Monique you running your mouth too much I thought you said let's not talk about the people marriages little girl so then Ashley comes in and Ashley you know, was just talking, and she's like, well, you know, I don't know about Franken, because should you do that when you're trying to conceive again? And everybody's like, bitch, conceived again? Conceived again? What you see with this nigga that you talk about conceived again? Which clearly she was, because she pregnant again. Um, But she pretty much goes on to admit 
you know what happened well tells them what michael told her and everybody said the same thing so you really believe that he didn't have sex with that girl i mean but why would he lie kind of like i was saying earlier i don't see the reason of him lying but i do know why he would lie but it doesn't make it doesn't make sense for him to lie so i get her i get her thinking of that but niggas is niggas and niggas will lie just j just because like she, like like they said it, it softened the blow and so um like i said don't nobody fucking believe that she didn't have sex i mean that he didn't have sex with her when this is over i'm going to watch because candace is going to be on um andy i'm gonna watch that even though i never watch andy uh what is it what happens what, what, watch what happens live i never watch it but candace gonna be on there i want to hear what she gotta say and then i also want to speak on some of the tweets that monique is currently tweeting but i'll be back the fight is starting okay so andy and them pulled the love and hip-hop like i knew they the fuck would so anyway so like i said we got her admitting to the open relationship and everybody's like bitch wait 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 but Karen said in her confessional, she's like, bitch, I'm pretty sure we done all filled in the blanks by now. Like, duh, that's what y'all do. Clearly, that is not a surprise to anybody, girl. It is not a surprise to anybody. So, you know, they pretty much winding down. And um, I don't know how we get into the whole thing with Candace and Monique going back and forth. But Candace pretty much says, like, oh, talks about pretty much how she had to, like, cancel on her. And she's like, well, I pretty much did that because... People want to act like they're sleeping when I leave or whatever and don't want to say bye. So I don't, like I said before, I, like I said earlier, why would I sit up here and try to act like I'm friends with you and try to do, a, do you a favor when you can't even say bye to me? You don't fuck with me. This is Monique. Well, Monique, you've been wrong this whole time. But see, you could have just sat in your shit. You sat up there and said, what are you talking about? I really was sleeping. I really was sleeping. What are you talking about? Monique, no, you wasn't. We can run that take the fuck back. You was not sleeping. You was acting like you was sleeping. You was not sleeping. Then you want to talk about some, oh, well, you don't have kids. So at the end of the day, so you don't know what it is that you're talking about because you don't have children. What does that have to do with anything? Like somebody said, your kids wasn't there on that trip with you. What are you talking about? That whole time that you was at that lake house, you was there by yourself with them girls. What does having kids have to do with anything? And like she said, that is, I mean, I don't even, I hate the whole thing about people saying shame and shaming, but that is mom shaming in the sense of you're trying to tell her that because she don't have kids, she don't understand how stressful shit could be. You didn't have your kids there, Monique. That's not a fucking excuse. And you were sleeping. You kept trying to die on that hill that you was, no, you were not. You were not sleeping. You was acting like you were sleeping, so you didn't have to say anything to that girl. You want to talk about you so real, you could have sat in that. You could have sat in that. Or you could have just been a real bitch and not act like you were sleeping and just ignored the bitch as a whole but no so um so after they go back and forth about that and candace i mean monique lying about how she wasn't sleeping then she brings up you know the real problem which is oh i have to find out from my friend from another friend that you're fucking around with somebody that i don't really fuck with da, da, da. so then the real issues come out they go back and forth back and forth now you could say at this point because candace taps her glass she's like i love monique i love her you could tell that she was trying to just kind of like die the situation down and I kept watching it to the very end because I wanted to make sure I was right. So Monique touched Candace first because she flipped her hair. And she did it like two, three, five, like two, three times. She flipped. She was like, girl, I can do it. Girl, I can do it. And so after maybe the second time she uh, flipped her hair, that's when you see Candace like reach across the table. So Monique, this whole thing was your fault. Now, previous to this, I did not go into this season on like a whole bunch of people saying, oh my gosh, I know that it was Candace's fault why they fought. Nope, I never did that. I just wanted to wait and see what happened. And Monique, from what we got so far, unless there's something extra they're going to add on next week, which is only the after effects probably, this this fight was your fault. You should have kept your hands to your fucking self. Period. Now, I want to go through some of her tweets, Monique tweets, and I haven't really seen them since the end of the show. Let's see here, though. I want to first talk about how she brought up the fact that... um she don't blame candace I don't, I don't even know what the fuck that means but she she pretty pretty much tweeted out how oh well you see how once i got um once i got that uh once i got the information about ashley how i just texted it over to her and i didn't say it to her um on screen okay but here's the thing monique first of all that was all over the place she would have found out regardless second of all you wasn't in front of cameras when you got that information and third of all you wasn't the only person who had that information so if she wouldn't have found out from you she would have found out for robin even if it was by accident so that doesn't really count doesn't really fucking count at all 
um again i'm also tired of you coming for people's relationships when you keep telling everybody else oh, not to let me go through because there was a couple things let me see here Mm -hmm. in this moment i have no idea what she's talking about to pretends to be asleep you were pretending to be asleep i'm really gonna go through all of these i've been pouring into this friendship and received nothing but plots in return amistad in season four the walrus in season five that's just what y'all know Oop, they hit y'all with it. Forget, regardless, you need to take accountability for what you did. You touched that girl first, and like um Candace just said, um, on right here on Watch Happens, what Watch What Happens Live, you've been trying, you've been picking a bone with this girl all season, and you've been waiting to have reason to go after her and to fight her. You found your damn reason, stand in the fact that you don't like the bitch, and stand in the fact that you wanted to fight her. Stand in it. Stand in it. That's it, y'all. Get in the comments, tell me what y'all think. I'm